The Confessions of St. Augustine, Book 11, Chapter 27 Courage, my mind, and press on mightily. God is our helper. He made us, and not we ourselves. Press on where truth begins to dawn. Suppose now the voice of a body begins to sound, and does sound, and sounds on, and list it ceases. It is silence now, and that voice is past, and is no more a voice. Before it sounded, it was to come, and could not be measured, because as yet it was not, and now it can't, because it is no longer. Then, therefore, while it sounded, it might, because there, then, was what might be measured. But yet even then it was not at a stay, for it was passing on and passing away. Could it be measured the rather for that? For while passing it was being extended into some space of time, so that it might be measured, since the present has no space. If therefore then it might, then too suppose another voice has begun to sound, and still start and still sounds in one continued tenor without any interruption. Let us measure it while it sounds, seeing when it has left sounding, it will then be past, and nothing left to be measured. Let us measure it verily, and tell how much it is. But it sounds still, nor can it be measured but from the instant it began in, into the end it left in. For the very space between is the thing we measure, namely from some beginning unto some end. Wherefore, a voice that is not yet ended can be measured, so that it may be said long, how long or short it is. Nor can it be called equal to another, or double to a single or the like. But when ended, it no longer is. How may it then be measured? And yet we measure times, but yet neither those which are not yet, nor those which no longer are, nor those which are not lengthened out by some powers, not those which have no bounds. We measure neither times to come, nor past, nor present, nor passing, and yet we do measure times. Deus Creator Omnium. This verse of eight syllables alternates between short and long syllables. The four short then, the first, third, fifth, and seventh, are but single, in respect of the four long, the second, fourth, sixth, and eighth. Every one of these to every one of those has a double time. I pronounce them, report on them, and find it so, as one's plain sense perceives. By plain sense, then, I measure a long syllable by a short, and I sensibly find it to have twice so much, but when one sounds after the other, if the former be short, the latter long, how shall I detain the short one, and how, measuring, shall I apply it to the long? that I may find this to have twice or so much, seeing the long does not begin to sound unless the short leaves sounding, and that very long one do I measure as present, seeing I measure it not till it be ended. Now his ending is his passing away. What then is it I measure? Where is the short syllable by which I measure? Where the long which I measure? Both have sounded, have flown, passed away, are no more. And yet I measure and confidently answer, so far as is presumed on a practiced sense, that as to space of time the syllable is but single, that double. And yet I could not do this, unless they were already past and ended. 
It is not then themselves which now are not that I measure, but something in my memory which there remains fixed. It is in you, my mind, that I measure times. Interrupt me not, that is, interrupt not yourself with the tumults of your impressions. In you I measure times. The impression which things as they pass by cause in you remains even when they are gone. This it is which still present I measure, not the things which pass by to make this impression. This I measure when I measure times. Either then this is time, or I do not measure times. What when we measure silence and say that this silence has held as long time as did that voice? Do we not stretch out our thought to the measure of a voice, as if it sounded that so we may be able to report of the intervals of silence in a given space of time? For thou both voice and tongue be still, yet in thought we go over poems and verses and any other discourse or dimensions of motions and report as to the spaces of times how much this is in respect of that, no otherwise than if vocally we did pronounce them. If a man would utter a lengthened sound and has settled in thought how long it should be, he has in silence already gone through a space of time and committing it to memory begins to utter that speech which sounds on until it be brought unto the end proposed. Yet it has sounded and will sound, for so much of it as is finished has sounded already and the rest will sound. And thus passes it on until the present intent conveys over the future into the past the past increasing by the diminution of the future until by the consumption of the future all is past.